Welcome to another episode of AWSP News. I'm your host today, Roz Thompson, Government Relations and Advocacy Director. So let's jump right in to session updates. The second week of January marked the beginning of this year's short 60-day session. The saying that short legislative sessions are like sprints and long legislative sessions are like running marathons is completely true. This session has gotten off to a rapid start with hundreds of new bills introduced, committee hearings taking place daily, and voting for bills beginning already, all while being done in a mostly remote manner. Fortunately, in this supplemental budget year, our state has a substantial budget surplus as well as unspent money from federal relief funds. It's my belief there has to be a way to keep school funding stable and support some additional funding needs like permanently updating the critical staffing section in the prototypical model to add more nurses, counselors, social workers, and psychologists. How the different pieces of this very complicated funding puzzle all fit together by the end of the session is still to be determined. One very exciting piece of this puzzle is the momentum to fund outdoor school for all fifth and sixth graders in Washington. Companion bills in both the House and Senate have been introduced, and the governor has included $52 million for this program in his budget. The support for this across the state is tremendous. For more details on all of the bills that I'm tracking, check out my legislative update each Friday, which is posted on our blog and is part of our Principal Matters email newsletter. There's another saying you hear around the Hill, legislation by anecdote. Stories are powerful and we need to hear yours. Check out our Advocacy and Action Center. You'll find it under the legislation menu on awsp.org for more information about our advocacy efforts. This week, I posted an action alert for passing bonds with a simple majority. It's an easy way for you to send messages to your legislators via email, Facebook, and Twitter. To get even more involved in AWSP's advocacy efforts, email me at roz at awsp.org. If you're in the mood for helping gather data and stories, another important piece of that puzzle is OSPI's COVID-19 student survey, back again for 2022. This is an opportunity to gather student voice through a student perception survey. Results can help districts get information on the mental health and well-being of students in their schools. The survey has actionable questions, allowing schools to hear from students and use what they say to make changes. The survey will be open from February 1st to 18th, 2022. For more information, see Principal Matters or look on OSPI's website. It sounds like there might be some good news on the COVID front as Omicron seems to be peaking in our state, but we've got an announcement to share that we can guarantee is good news. Last Friday, two of our AWSP directors headed north on I-5 to surprise McMicken Heights Elementary Principal Alex Haas with a huge award and recognition. Alex will represent elementary principals across our state as the 2022 NAESP National Distinguished Principal. The Highline Public Schools principal has led incredible student growth in her school, all while fostering an incredible sense of belonging and community engagement. She and her staff have created a clear vision for students to dream it, believe it, achieve it, and exceed it. Congratulations, Alex, it's very well deserved. And in more good news, we're excited to announce a new AWSP team member, Damian Brown. Damian will support our team and members like you across the state as our professional learning specialist. As a retired US Army Sergeant with almost 10 years of experience working for a railroad association, we're excited about all of the unique skills and experience he brings to the team. That wraps up this episode of AWSP News. Keep up all the great work for kids, and we'll see you next time. Hope you're ready for the next episode, hey!